26. From the following information, determine the delta S for the following. And then we have here. We want to find out the equation for N gas plus O gas yields NO gas. We want to find out what that delta S value is. What's the change in the entropy? That's what delta S is. Now, we can't use our appendix values or the back of the book values. What they gave us is they gave us three different equations with delta S values. And from there, we have to compile these three to find out the equation that we want. So. Let's just say we want, right? I want, so I want this equation. I want N gas plus O gas yields NO. And this equation is already balanced, so I don't have to worry about balancing it. Now, this is very similar. It, it basically is the same thing for Hess's law. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list out the three that have the delta S values. So this would be equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. I'm not including the top one because that's the one that I want. Now, the way that we're gonna do it is we work from left to right. With this type of question, it's the easiest to just have like a system in place and always use the same system regardless of whether they're asking for delta S's or delta H's, which is normally the type of question that this comes from. So let's look at N gas first. We ask ourselves two questions. We always ask, so maybe I'll just say up here, what are the two questions that we always ask ourselves when we're doing this type of problem? The first one is how many, you want to make sure that you know how many you need of your component that you're discussing at the moment. And then the second question is what side? Do you want it on the left side or do you want it on the right side? So for example, for your nitrogen, I want how many? Well, I want one of them and I want it on the left side. So I just say one and left. Now I go to my three equations and I find the one that has just the N. I don't care about this and I don't care about this. I'm looking specifically for that N value. So I'm scanning. I don't see just an N here. Ah, here it is. That's just the N, right? And I just make sure there's no N over here. So I have to use equation number two. But... Ask yourself the two questions. How many ends do you have here? I have two of them, and it's on the right side. You need to make it match. You need to have only one, and it needs to be on the left side. So we're going to just manipulate this equation. Well, what are you going to do? Well, if you starting on the right side and you need it on the left, what we're going to do is we're going to take number two, we're going to take the second equation and we need to flip it. I see a flip right off the bat because it's on the right side and I need it on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this entire equation. So I'm going to write 2N gas yields N2 gas. And when you do that, your delta S for that equation also gets flipped. So meaning the sign gets flipped. This was a positive 115.0. Now it's a negative 115.0. And maybe I'll just put kil joules per Kelvin. Okay. So that gets rid of the right and the left side, but the number is not the same as well. I want to go from a two to a one. What else am I going to do here? Well, if I want to go down to one, you think either multiply or divide. And it seems like I want to go to a lower number. So I could take two and divide it by two to get just one. So I need to flip and then I have to divide by two. And you have to do that for all of the coefficients. So whether you say you multiply it by half or you're going to take all your coefficients and divide by two. So for example, I have two in front of the N and I'm dividing by two, so that's just gonna be one. And that's why we're doing it because I need just the one. There was a one and two in front of here. 
one divided by two is 0.5, or we could just say that this is now one half. And you have to also take the delta S and divide it by two. So whatever you do to the equation, you gotta do to the delta S. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this value, negative 115 and divide by two. And I get 57.5, so negative, 57.5 kilojoules. And that is now what the second equation is. Once you use an equation, cancel it out because you're never gonna use it again. That's why we like to just always systematize everything. Okay, this one is done, check. Now we do the same thing for the next one. So let's see, we ask ourselves the two questions. How many oxygens? I just want one of them, right? There's a one in front of the oxygen and I want it on the left side. So now I have two equations to look for. Number one and three. Which one is the one that just has the O? Keep in mind, we just wanna find out that O. So I'm scanning number one. I see an O2, but that's not the same as just an oxygen. Number three, ah, here it is. But let's see. This one, I have two of them and it's on the right side. It's literally the same thing that we had to do the, to the first one, right? So for number three, we have to flip the equation. So let's just flip it first because it's on the right side, we want it on the left. So if I flip the equation, it's gonna be two O gas yields O2 gas. And now that delta S value has to be flipped, meaning the sign. So it'd be a negative 117.0. Negative 117.0, and that's joules per Kelvin. Now, since I have two and I only want one, I have to also divide by two, which means I take the whole equation and divide it by two. Look at those coefficients. Two divided by two is just one, so I could just erase that. And now I had 102, one divided by two is one half. Okay, so I could basically get rid of this, and I guess I'll get rid of this as well, because now that's the total equation. But remember, now I just have to take this and divide by two. So what's negative 117 divided by two? 58.5, so negative 58.5. Okay, and once I use a, a equation, I never use it again. So now I know this is the last one that I have to just manipulate. Let's see what we have to do. So this one is done. NO, how many? What side? Ask yourself the two questions. I want one and I want it on the right side, right? There's only one here and it's on the right side of the yield side. I scan equation number one. Seems that here's the NO, yes. Ask yourself the two questions. So I have two of them, but it's on the right side. So the sides are correct. They're both on the right side, so I don't have to flip. Thank goodness. But I have two of them, and I just want one. So we're going to take number one, and we're just going to divide it by two. So uh, maybe I'll just write this out. N2 gas plus O2 gas yields two NO gas. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the whole thing and the delta S value was 24.8 joules per Kelvin. I just have to take the whole thing and divide by two. So just look at those coefficients, right? There was one here, but one divided by two is a half. There was 102. But one divided by two, once again, is a half. One, whoop, one divided by two. And then two divided by two is just the one. And then, come over here, I have to take this and divide it by two. So this would be 12.4. 12.4. 12 
12.4. Okay, that gets rid of that, and you used all of your equations. So now just comes the check yourself phase. Let's just see, do we get the equation that I wanted in the first place? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scooch this up a little bit just so that I have more room. And let's see. So when you add these three equations up, like things that are on opposite sides will cancel. So for example, you have one half and two on the right side, and you have one half and two on the left side. So they go bye bye. That's the same exact thing. You have one half O2 and one half O2. So that goes bye bye. And nothing else can cancel. So you're left with N gas plus O gas yields NO, which is exactly what we wanted. So now all you have to do is just add up those, del those delta S values to get your final delta S value for your whole reaction. So I'm going to take a negative 57.5 plus a negative 58.5 plus 12.4. When you add them all up, you get negative 103.6. And units would be the same joule per Kelvin. And that's the end. Not bad. There you go, guys. Okay, what'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I love helping you guys out. If you wouldn't mind, tell your friends, tell your classmates, and press the subscribe button to help the channel out. Thank you so much, and I look forward to helping you in more questions. Bye-bye.